What it do, YouTube? It's Carfee. Back at it, man. And things continue to get tricky for 1090 Jake in this blogosphere. You know, like up until this point, other than the whole scrap, you know, Pino getting the best of them. But he hit him with them brass knuckles. You know, individuals felt different ways about that. You know, it's the streets. Some cats feel like ain't no fair one. Some cats like, yo, uh, Jake squared up was ready to, to to shoot to shoot the fade with him and, and Pino had to use weapons. Like, I don't know, it's comment how y'all feel about that. But my point is, other than that, that was like the only tarnish that you could say or L that 1090 took since his time in the blogosphere. But, uh, you know, things with all this recent stuff get tricky for him, but now, uh, with this recent Vlad TV interview, some cats is like, yo, is 1090 Jake using the N word on Vlad TV? Like, what's fuck is wrong with this guy? Yeah, it's just fucked. I think it's better to have the magazines in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're not. Yeah. It's just fucked. I think it's better to have the magazines in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're not. Yeah. It's just fucked. I think it's better to have the magazines in here. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're not. Now, I ran that thing two times. You can hear he didn't say the N word. He said, I think it is. And you see, he took the social network to, to respond to this and to let Cass know, like, yo, I didn't say the N word. I said, I think it is. It just, you know, I guess maybe with his accent or whatever, that's what it kind of came out sounding like, which I don't think no white people should be using the N word personally. You know, it's just. It's a whole nother discussion or whatever, but I, I just say that, you know, white people shouldn't be saying it. And on top of it, it just kind of looks wild corny as well. And Jake actually did used to use the word early on when he first hit the blog. You better tell her how we were rocking the Appalachian now. Big 500. You better tell her how we were rocking the Appalachian now. Goose Swain ain't gonna hit him. Goose ain't get him. I'm gonna kill his ass, man. Stop playing. You already know this shine shit. That stone shit, man. Love and loyalty, bitch. This the stove. This the job. You know what it is. Fuck a hoes in the bathroom like it ain't shit. Nigga, get that money. Nigga, y'all tatted up. Bitch, stupid ass bees out in this bitch, y'all. Man, I swear I think Jake wishes that was one he could take back that wasn't floating around you know what i mean like aside from the whole n-word thing just comment like is this comedy y'all like does 1090 just kind of come off a bit i don't know if i want to call the man goofy but like yo what, what the fuck you trying too hard b you trying too hard and when he's when he said the the fucking hoes in the bathroom it looked like you did the jerking your gherkin gesture or something like what the fuck's going on i don't know man for real, y'all, let me know if you think that that is not a good look for 1090 and he probably wish he could have that one back tap in. But speaking of all this going on, you know, with the situation, with the grievance, you know, again, up until this point, every little situation has got into in the blogosphere aside from that scrap and that one's up for debate, you know, because uh, as we know, 1090 clapped back at the Pino dude with the full interrogation video, which whew, you talk about not a good look. That was the worst look ever for Pino, like all bad, you know, and exposed that he was lying about a lot of stuff. But getting back to Jake um, with this grievance thing now, you know, reportedly there's more ish popping up. Is it real? Is it fake? We don't know. But, uh, you know, it seems as Jake has had a rapport and a relationship with a lot of cats, you know, in the blogosphere who's tapped in in the streets. And, you know, one individual recently sounded off and, you know, was saying like, yo, I'm falling back from dude. Who is that nigga, man? You ain't never seen before. Oh, shit. Who is that nigga, man? Look, I'm going to say shout out to him because he know been rocking me since the beginning. I ain't never but seen you, him that. You don't know who rocking with you, man. Look, man, the last time a nigga was hiding his identity, he was the fed. Oh my. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, we don't know who this nigga is, man. But go ahead. Man. <laughs> but he just shared the dude that um, dropped the first grievance. It's another one. I haven't read it yet, but I'm just like, it's like every week it's a document coming out. Mick, you know why I cut my ties, though? Because I could tell once one thing came and the way a nigga responded, it was most shit. And mm. Jake 
people mm-hmm. rock with me. Like how I met Jake was like this. I put out the hundred K trap paperwork, right? Mm-hmm. So I told the world, like this nigga gave up Melly Gun, you feel me? All of a sudden, this nigga pulls up and said he fought the YW Melly paperwork. So I, I went live and I called this nigga fat heel Billy motherfucker, all type of shit, right? Now this is before <laughs> I was cool. No, for real, they didn't know it. So I went in on the nigga, right? So he ended up DMing me like, bruh, I didn't know that was your paperwork, my bad. I'm going to make it right. So on his next video, he shouted me out, posted me on the community section. He like, this a real nigga. I talked to him, everything good. So I'm like, oh, you feel me? This, this, this nigga decent. You feel right. what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm going to fuck with the nigga. You feel me? So we've been rocking ever since then. But when, when that grievance came up, see, this this where I had the problem at. Now, all that black called him a rat, right? Mm-hmm. And he said, well, if I'm a rat, then you're a rat because you wrote a grievance on the COs. Mm-hmm. So then this come up and he said, well, I'm not no rat. But I'm just saying, well, damn, why did you bring that shit up with Kodak? I know it was to basically say, I'm not a rat, Kodak. If I am a rat, you wrote this grievance. But the whole time, you did too. Right. He never and talked about it. Never talked. So that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. And then once that Byron Blake nigga started sending me all this shit and I found out it was real, I just said, you know what? It's going to be a wave of shit that come on, Jake. Uh, I'm just going to cut my... He never did nothing to me personally. You feel right. me? I'm going to just cut my ties now because I don't got time for that shit, man. I hate... It's just like with Trish's News. You talk all that shit about Duck, but failed to mention that you got picked up by the face. How did you forget the hell <laughs> You heard him, King AK-47, who 1090 and him have been on a lot of panels together and seemingly always been cool. Like, and I did see him talk to Jake after it about the situation. Like, yo, you said a name. Like, it didn't seem like he was really on him about the grievance thing, but he was like, yo, you're naming names. That's... I don't know. I'm not really feeling it, but it seems as time has progressed on, he's deciding to just cut his ties as, you know, the more he he looks into it, he's like, nah, man, you know, like, I I can't rock with you. I'm not rocking with you like you're rocking with me and rocking with y'all. And, um, you know, aside from that, you heard that he originally encountered 1090 Jake in the blogosphere on some I guess blog is fear beef type ish. Uh, you heard him reference the YNW Melly 100K track paperwork and everything with Melly's case, where um, King AK 47 says he originally was the one that had the paperwork and then Jake took it and ran with it. And, you know, everyone looked to Jake like he was the one that unveiled that whole situation. And, um, you know, he hit him up. And called him a hillbilly, whatever he said, fat pork choppy son of a bitch, and you know, went in on him. And then Jake made it right with him, hit him in the DM, and was like, "Yo, my bad. I didn't know that was originally your paperwork. I'm gonna shout you out. I'm gonna show you love." And you know, they kept it pushing from there and had mutual respect. And as a side note, man, a lot of shit that that comes about in the blogosphere paperwork or just different stories or whatever you know the individual that's associated or it goes down in the books is like yo they're the ones that broke this or that almost i, I want to say nine times out of ten but more like eight times out of ten a lot of like is not the original individual who came to the blogosphere with it who really broke it you know and that's what king ak-47 was saying about this situation you know so he hit Jake up with some aggression about the paperwork. Then Jake showed him love, posted about him. They kept it pushing with that mutual respect and rapport and blogosphere relationship. But now he's cutting ties with Jake as he's pondered on this situation more like, yo, you're naming names. There's all this other ish that's popping out now. I don't know if it's real or not. And it just seems like there's just going to be an outpour of documents and things like that tied to 1090. And, you know, he's like, is it all real or fake? I don't know, but you already took that tarnish and I'm not trying to wait around to find out if it's real or fake. Cause 
to him, it seems like it's a really good idea for him to get away from Jake, you know? And then the whole Kodak Black thing, as they were recently beefing, like King AK-47 has a legitimate point there, whether you fuck with Jake or not, or uh, whatever your viewpoint is on this whole situation, that's what 1090 was getting at Kodak about, aside from him having protection, you know, from the bloods went behind when he was behind the wall in the feds and then collabing with six nine for that one million dollar payday. You know, Jake looked at that as like a suspect deal as he's tied to the bloods, you know. So he was like, yo, you disrespected the B or whatever. Well now he's like and, and that and that was the other thing ten ninety said, like, yo, you were telling on the CEOs writing grievances when in tune Turns out Jake did the same thing. So King a AK-47, it seems as this 1090 Jake situation continues to progress and all that, he's like, yo, nah, man, I can't fuck with you. You know, you're looking bad in the blogosphere. And what do you guys think about that? And what he said about Kodak, the whole situation, everything he was speaking on. You know, do you feel what King AK-47 is talking about? Do you think that this is just the beginning and there's going to be a lot of other individuals who I guess we'll say in a blogosphere are known to be street dudes or have street credibility to say, Jake, we ain't fucking with you no more. What do y'all think? Is this going to be a trend? Are we going to see more of this? Is this going to hurt 1090 Jake's momentum in the blogosphere? Will he hurt his, will it hurt his platform? You know, uh, what do you guys think? Or you think nah it ain't really nothing major tap in let's talk about it all but uh, as i'm thinking about it i don't know like street bloggers or whatever you want to call it i don't think i've seen too many of them really go in on jake or maybe they have and i'm just missing it comment below and let me know and uh, you also heard him mention trenches news uh being listed as a federal informant that's a Another trended topic that's been going around in the blogosphere, man. This is just wild, as I always say. You know, when it comes to the blogosphere, a lot of different worlds intersect and overlap. You know, from hip hop to the streets to cats that are playing a character to cats that are playing, not playing a character, you know, to cats that are saying they're official and it turns out they got skeletons in their closet or stains on their jacket, uh, you know, from cats that just are trying to be entertainers from gang culture, just all these different worlds intersect, overlap, and, you know, things in the politics of it all and the way different people rock with each other can get very tricky. And it seems it's starting to get tricky for 1090 Jake. So let me know what you think about it all. Sub up, stay tuned for more. And again, uh, as you heard, you were saying there's more stuff, it seems, coming and coming. Do you guys think that's just the beginning of the paperwork storm against Time 90, Jake? And, uh, you know, now, too, whether other stuff comes out and it's real or fake or whatever it is, it feels like, um, you know, at this point, a lot of individuals are going to be more inclined to just say, oh, you know what, that's real because, he, you know, he already got this going against him, you know what I mean? Like, who knows, we'll have to see how it all plays out, shakes out in the blogosphere. So thanks for watching, let's talk in the comments. Uh, 10, 1090's Vlad TV interview, the whole N-word thing, the old cringe-tastic video, King AK-47 stepping away from 1090, you know, his hypocritical stance about Kodak Black. Let's talk about it all. Sub up. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.